Ah, uh, we. This is an unboxing video. Quite a knackered bit of packaging, actually. I don't know what is inside, but I predict it is an oak one. Every fucking time. It is Dairy Devil. Watch out for Bullseye Man. I am trying to tone down complaining about the covers. But, for fuck's sake, Bullseye Man isn't even on the cover. Am I the one that has been unreasonable here? If you call a fucking collection, watch out for Bullseye Man, you put Bullseye Man on the cover. It is either idiocy or lack of care, and both of those things should be a cause for firing somebody. He's not on the back cover either. Watch out, Dairy Devil. Bullseye Man is coming, like fuck he is. That's Potter Man, not Bullseye Man. People didn't really care when I was pointing out that the covers needed touching up. They needed someone moving bits and pieces about to properly function as a front cover to a collection. Nobody seemed to agree with me on that, and they all thought it meant... I wanted them still to be recoloured, which I only want to say because if they do recolour it, that is a good opportunity to fix problems that arise when you are taking a comic book cover and stretching it out to be a cover to a trade like this. Trades don't have barcodes on the front, they don't have corner boxes. This cover will originally have had both. But independent from those quality of life style patches, this cover doesn't have Bullseye Man on it. Bullseye Man is the big draw, his first appearance. They have named it after that. Then not put that issue on the cover. They have Dairy Devil fighting Deathly Stalker. I wish I never bought into epic collections. They are what I have come to hate the most about collected editions. This is a collection line aimed only at the type of reader who will happily accept shit and read shit and think that it is great value for money because they are getting all these Dairy Devil issues in one place. People who think that there is some value in having four issues of Marvel Funfair crammed into a binded book, even though they are actually really fucking shit. But hey, now I finally have these four issues of Marvel Funfair. So after pissing off everyone who collects these, this is Volume 6, Collecting Comics from 1974 through to 1976. We have Dairy Devils, Issue 108 through to 132, as well as a Marvel 2 for 1 issue. And thinking about that, Issue 132 is the first appearance of Bullseye Man. I wonder if they just crammed that issue into here, because otherwise there is nothing really here to capture people's attention. If it was a last minute edition, that would provide a reason for not having Bullseye Man on the cover. But it's still fucking unprofessional and shit and unbelievable. I was expecting to turn to this page and for it to have a different title to... Solidify my theory. Still go watch out for Bullseye Man even on this. Even down here as well. So no, this is just a pile of shit made by idiots for brown nose and fanboys. We start this one off with issue 108 where Dairy Devil fights Mark, real name Abe. Abe with a B, not Ape like a monkey. There are actually some interesting ideas in this one. And some beautiful bald ladies too. 
My favourite aspect of Dairy Devil was he dumped Scarlett Johansson just to get with Moon Garden. And then Moon Garden turned him down. So he went back to Scarlett Johansson. I do always enjoy going back and reading these early appearances of bad guys who later go on to become Thunderballs members. Some other Thunderballs members later in this as well. Even Bullseye Man, I guess. Look, it's Quasar's girlfriend. I mean the woman, not the two. Not the two animals. Although if any book was Ganon to get into bestiality, it would be Quasar. We've got an artist finding an excuse to reappropriate their portfolio pieces here. Now, I want to say this is the first appearance of Nocturna, but I think that is wrong. This is definitely one of her first major appearances. I would say this is maybe a second appearance. Here is that Marvel 2 for 1. This issue, as well as the Dairy Devils around it, are written by Steve Gerbo. Always had interesting ideas, if not executed perfectly. I do like some of the ongoing subplots in his Marvel 2 for 1. Like Jesus Christ, who the thing kind of adopts a factoid that everyone at Marvel seemed to forget. You would think that Tom Bevort, supposedly the thing's biggest fan, would be aware that his favourite character has been neglecting his godson for about 50 years now. Dairy Devil issue 111 as the first appearance of Silly Samurai. That's right, the character from Wolfman and the Excellent Men. Another character not created by Christopher Claravoyant. Add on, let's check the credits just to be sure. Does that say Christopher Claravoyant? Does anything in the credits say Christopher Claravoyant? There's no little notes down here saying Christopher Claravoyant. The old breed of writer who wants to convince people that they created characters that they didn't. The Mike O'Brien Bensons. The Kurt Buseys. They can all be traced back to Christopher Claravoyant. When someone like Christopher Claravoyant is embraced as an inspirational and influential writer, a man who really wants you to think that he created Wolfman and Storms, well, it makes sense that people like Michael Brian Benson and Kirk Busey then think that it is appropriate to try and claim characters as their own. Boy, if I had any intention of ever monetizing this channel, this would get me instantly demonetized. We have a big story here with Nocturna and her brother, Mandela. Here is Nocturna's backstory, and you can see for yourself how wrong that Leather Legion comic was in its depiction of her, uh, both artistically and in the form of the writing. It feels a bit tangential to Dairy Devil, but at least after a couple of years now, Dairy Devil does feel to have some momentum and a direction. It feels like a writer is approaching Dairy Devil with some ideas, as opposed to just cashing a paycheck on an unpopular Marvel title. And I am not being unfair, eh? Dairy Devil was unpopular. It was so unpopular that it went bi-monthly and it was always under threat of cancellation. I didn't know if this story helped matters or made things worse. Maybe a long, ongoing story is just going to turn away more people from Dairy Devil. That might also explain why Steve Gerbel doesn't last much longer on the title. 
but he still finds time to bring in his pet character, Swamp Thing. Deathly Stalker is in this as well. I don't remember this story. I think that's probably true of most of Dairy Devil. I don't remember most of these stories. But I don't even remember, like, the slightest in of this. Oh no, Deathly Stalker has captured Froggy and... Is that Deborah Ann Wall? I don't know about that because she left Dairy Devil's book around about issue 58. And then she weirdly moved over to Ghost Driver. But yeah, this would be about the time that they started bringing her back. Unlike on the rebooted Dairy Devil show where they, they are not bringing her back. Despite the fact that she's hot. I can't wait to read this issue. Bullseye Man is in it. Yeah, it is coloured more like Deborah Ann Wall here. I could just take a time out and look to see if they call her by her name, but I'm not going to. The alternative is that it's just some bimbo that Froggy is banging. Here is the first appearance of Darkwing from some Captain Americas. I reviewed this issue. I don't recommend it. I'm not crazy about how glossy the paper is either. Certainly doesn't feel glossy. But it does have the worst attribute of glossy paper. In that it's fucking shiny and reflective. I have talked about this stuff with Hydra before. I think in my review of that Darkwing one. They restructure Hydra with some villains put in charge of different divisions. One of them, Man Killer, gans on to be a fairly prominent character in Thunderballs. She joins the team eventually. And I can't find a single bit of art featuring them, but Fister is also one of the Hydra leaders. Actually, Darkwing might have been on that big team at the end of New Thunderballs. Not sure on that, but it is possible. Like Nocturna and her attack on the White House, this again feels like someone is approaching the title with an actual idea. But then, it just ends. And this new version of Hydra is never referred to again. First appearance of Turbo here. The Turbo armor later goes on to be used by... That girl and her brother in the new Warriors as Torpedo. The Turbo character is tied in with all the corporation stuff in Captain America and Hulk. Truth be told, Dairy Devil had a pretty lousy rogues gallery. He had some... Bad guys who were totally fine, ones like David Tennant or Deathly Stalker. I would say the only one that really had any character to them was Potter Man, as featured on the back of this. Oh, here yeah, is a good example of the sort of Dairy Devil enemy that I consider not very good. Bull Man could be... Just about any other hero's enemy. So after loads of that, and you get to issue 131, which is the first appearance of Bullseye Man, typically I was off by one. He stands out as being a lot more interesting than Bull Man or Owl Man. This first appearance of Bullseye Man... This is the big thing of note in here. This is the biggest impact anything from this collection will have to Dairy Devil. I don't know if it is the case that you read this knowing that Bullseye Man is going to be a big deal. Or if Bullseye Man is just much better than 
most of the enemies that Dairy Devil has faced before. It does seem pretty interesting from the get-go. Not as psychotic as he will become, but he is pretty compelling. If you read these, it'll become pretty clear why Bullseye Man did keep appearing and quickly became Dairy Devil's arch nemesis. Bullseye Man or Kingpin Man? Who is Dairy Devil's arch nemesis? I would say Bullseye Man because Kingpin Man is shared with Spider Man for one thing, but Bullseye Man is what Dairy Devil often fights. But it isn't the traditional hero versus villain set up with Dairy Devil and Kingpin Man, whereas it is with Bullseye Man. Also, before I forget, this should obviously be the front cover. Although with a different title, I think this could have worked. Maybe even that. You know what? I would call it something like the new Hydra and have this as the cover. There we go. Call it Hydra and Seek. And that will be your cover. Right. 132 is another Bullseye Man issue. That's probably why I was thinking... 132 was his first appearance. This, of course, could be another cover that they put on the front. If you like Bullseye Man, worth reading these, I guess. I don't have a tremendous amount to say about this one. I probably could if I thought too much on it, but it's only Dairy Devil. I'll be honest, I don't really like doing these epic collections anymore. I just get miserable and disappointed about the effort that gans into them. There is some moments of purpose hidden between a lot of listlessness in this volume. I don't recommend it. I don't think I recommend any epic collections anymore. I'll rate it seven thumbs up.